So some people say that this is not something that the police have or ever arrested people for. It's it's in people's minds. They're they're making this up. Do you have cases that the police have investigated and perhaps r- arrests have been made? Yes, there are at least ten cases. There are at least ten cases which have been successfully prosecuted in the UK courts. Unfortunately, for every one case, SRA case that is successfully prosecuted, there are probably hundreds more that have never even made it to the courts, let alone been successfully prosecuted. But these disprove the claims that SRA does not exist in the UK. Of course it exists, unless you're trying to suggest that the courts somehow had some kind of mass hallucination, uh, which of course is absurd. And these being official cases where the SRA evidence was openly examined in court and believed, otherwise there would not have been a successful conviction of the defendants, were also reported on by the media when they reached their verdicts. And all the official transcripts of these cases will be available if if one is willing to approach the courts for them. It's all on public record. It's not hidden somewhere uh, obscure. So it's a nonsense to say that SRA doesn't exist in the UK because that makes as much sense as saying that child sex abuse doesn't exist in the UK. And there was a time in the UK when people were saying child sex abuse didn't exist. Mm. And we're making the same mistake all over again because the idiots who used to say child sex abuse didn't exist were allowed to get away with it. So now you have new idiots who are saying SRA doesn't exist. Mm. So just to give you one example of the 10 cases that were successfully prosecuted, two members of a witch's coven in St. Ives, Cornwall, were convicted at Truro Crown Court in December 2012 for their, and I quote, ritualistic, sickening sex abuse of young girls, jailing Jack Kemp for 14 years and Peter Petrowsk for 18 Judge Graham Cottle told them, and I quote, The offences range from the extremely serious to the truly horrifying. The judge said that the scars left on the victims were so obvious that it would seem extremely unlikely that either of them have any real prospect of recovery. Hmm. Petrowsk was convicted of rape, aiding and abetting an attempted rape and indecent assault. Kemp was convicted of 10 sexual offences. So that's a fairly recent case. Uh, One of 10 examples. And this list was compiled. It's a compilation of two separate lists on SRA cases successfully prosecuted. One was done by Tim Tate, the journalist who wrote Children for the Devil. And the other was done by another British journalist, Andrew Boyd, who wrote another book on SRA entitled Blasphemous Rumours. And Blasphemous Rumours is still available on Amazon, if anyone wants to look at it. Uh, That was also written in 1991. So these are professional journalists compiling these cases. And because it was in the early 90s, there have been some updating of the cases for more recent uh, years, such as the 2011 cases uh, uh, and the one that I just read out. And it shows that Despite all the efforts to cover it up and stop SRA being focused on by the public, there have at least been 10 cases, maybe more, where the SRA was openly shared and the jury accepted it and it was a conviction, successful conviction of all the defendants. Uh, So we have to accept that this is a public record. But on top of that, the Metropolitan Police themselves have officially recognized satanic abuse on their website. So you have Metropolitan Police saying satanic abuse exists. You have Wiltshire Police referring to at least six witnesses of Edward Heath's satanic abuse who corroborated each other. You have these cases which, by the way, are available on the internet on my website, uh, the Casra website. There will be a link in the description box below this video to Wilfred's website, so you want to click over there and read the rest. 
So if you want to access this list and read through it, uh, it's on the Casera website. And so it's all out there and it's official and it is a nonsense for people to suggest the SRA doesn't exist. But unfortunately, some of the so-called skeptics are not skeptics. They know SRA exists. They just don't want the public to know that because they themselves are involved in SRA. So they want the public to think SRA doesn't exist. So you have been researching this for years. So I imagine that people will have come forward to you either victims or participants. Do you have any stories from those both those sides? Yes, um, I've met former Satanists who had a radical change of heart, who converted to Christianity and left Satanism and have shared with me from an insider's point of view what the Satanists get up to. What did they describe? Uh, one of these former Satanists um, saw a, a sacrifice of a baby. Mm. And she described that. And she was forced to eat the baby, baby's body after it was sacrificed. Um, it was killed by the high priest using a dagger to slit his throat. And this occurred in her coven in Surrey in 1961. Halloween 1961, she was initiated into the coven. The people you trust the most who are supposed to take care of you and protect you from harm actually did the harm. When Patricia was five years old, she was initiated into a secret satanic cult through a series of sick and abusive rituals. I was whisked away by family members to take part in a ceremony, a ritual. In the basement, there was a um, altar that was made out of wood, and on the floor of the concrete was a pentagram painted with red paint. There was um, family members and also occult members around in a circle around the altar. They were chanting in uh, some unknown language. I just remember being pinned down, strapped down, and then a ritual performed on me. Patricia says she was raped and pledged to Satan, but the horror didn't stop there. Satanic rituals and animal sacrifice continued throughout her childhood. We were forced to drink the blood and to eat eyes, and if we didn't, our, we were tormented until we did. And um, the eyes were to give us power to see into the spirit realm. For Patricia, there was no safe place. Unable to process the abuse, she suppressed her memories. The uh, night terrors would continue and the dreams, and my brain was trying to sort it all out, work it all out, and you know, it's, it's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. I felt like I was living a constant a horror movie. A horror movie, that's how I describe it. A horror movie on Halloween. At 13 years old, she ran away from home, but the darkness she'd grown up with followed her. In her teens and 20s, Patricia read tarot cards and communicated with spirits. All the while, she lived in constant fear and darkness. I was able to see demons and spirits and ghosts. And as I got older, and I still continued those things, I had spiritual guides. I wanted power. I wanted to have complete power over my life because I didn't have any power over my life when I was younger. Any time that I went, try to get healing from the occult, the first thoughts that would come to my mind was to, to kill myself, in which I tried many times to do whether it be slicing my wrist or taking overdose of pills, ending up in the hospital, ending up in psychiatric ward. She longed for freedom, but didn't know where to turn. I wanted peace, I wanted to be happy, but I didn't know how to get it because I was afraid of God. I hated God. I didn't want nothing to do with Him. I was searching to be safe. I was searching for peace. I was searching to be loved. Desperate, Patricia went to church with a Christian friend. 
As the church worshiped, she felt the love of Jesus for the first time. Then she felt something else. Everybody was praising the Lord, and I wanted to do what everybody was doing. I wanted to feel what they were feeling. I needed freedom. So I raised my hands, and a dark presence came up behind me and literally jerked my shoulder. I wasn't budging them. And um, I said, no, I'm not going. No, I'm not leaving. This is where I'm staying. And I continued, and I just kept crying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And then it started lifting lifting and lifting. Patricia became a Christian and began a long journey to freedom and wholeness with Jesus. I got on my face and I said, I want to feel you moving in my life. I want to see, feel release from these strongholds. I want to feel peace. When I got up off the floor, he was there. He was there with me. And I started reading every scripture about him, the woman at the well, the woman um, who touched his garment. I was those women, the woman who was about to be stoned. I was all those women and one who needed him. I needed him to gradually um, show me that I could trust him. And that's what he did. Through intense Christian counseling and prayer, Patricia finally found the freedom and peace she had always wanted in Christ. Now I walk daily with joy and I never forget to thank him every day for what he's done in my life. Never forget to thank him. And I enjoy life so much more. You know, it's later in my life, but you know, he's given me all those years back that the, the devil stole from me. If he can take someone like me, who was involved in all of that darkness and oppressed by it and set me free, and give me a whole new life. If he can take someone like me, who was into the occult so deep, into that darkness so deep, who was trapped by the enemy, and pull her up out of that hole, that pit of hell, and bring her into the light, he can do that for anyone, anyone. I don't care how deep they are into the occult. He can pull you out. It just takes just a few words. Jesus, help me. And he will be there. He will be there to help pull you out.